Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of Shimla Village Tales, written down by Alistair Cott. In the first story, we see a trading up story, which works well for the rabbit until it doesn't. In the second story, two brothers are kicked out by a mean stepmother and a worthless father, but they turn this into an opportunity to improve their own lives. Okay, let's begin. The Rabbit and the Barber, Trading Up There was a rabbit who asked her barber to shave him. In doing so, the barber cut off his ear. Take my ear, said the rabbit, and I will take your scissors. A little further on, he saw an old woman pulling grass with her hands. Take this, he said, giving her the razor, and cut the grass with it, and I will take your cloth. When she asked him why, he replied, You have my razor, and I will take your toddler. Then he went a little further and saw a ghee seller. Take my toddler and give me your ghee, said the rabbit. So saying, he left the toddler and walked off with the ghee. Not long after, he met a woman and told her to make him some gulgulas, or sweets, with the ghee. As soon as they were ready, he picked them up and ran away. A little further on was a man with a plow, a horse, and a bullock. Take these sweets, said the rabbit, and I will yoke your plow for you. But instead of doing this, he ran away with the horse. Not long after, he came across a marriage procession, where the bridegroom was walking beside the bride's litter, called the dooley. Why do you walk? Get on my horse, said the rabbit gaily. So the man got on, and the rabbit ran off with the bride. But her husband ran after, and advised his wife to kill the rabbit. When they got to a quiet place and began resting under a tree, she asked the rabbit to let her comb his hair. But as soon as he put his head down, she gave him a severe blow, which stunned him, and then she ran back to her husband. Thus ended the adventures of the rabbit. The end. Okay, and story number two, Rupa and Bisunta. There was once a woman who had no little children of her own. Every day she used to watch the sparrows building up their nests and bringing up their young. One day it so happened that a mother bird died, leaving several young ones. After some time, a new mother bird came in, and she was not good at all to the young fledglings. The woman felt for them and said to her husband, If I had children of my own, and after a time I died, would you do like the birds have done, and let my children be treated unkindly? But the man replied, These are birds, and I am a man. After a few years the woman had two sons, and when they had grown up to be big boys, she died. Her husband had forgotten her conversation about the birds, and he married another woman. One day, the eldest boy was playing with a ball, when it bounced into his stepmother's room. He asked if he might fetch it, but when he went inside, she made it an excuse for all sorts of complaints about him to his father. So his father turned him out of the house, and he went away with his little brother. As they rested in the forest that night, the younger brother laid awake and overheard a conversation between two night jars. They talked about many things. At length, one of the birds remarked, If people only knew that whoever eats me will become a Raja, and whoever eats you will become a Prime Minister. On hearing this, the younger brother crept out of bed, and taking his gun, shot both birds and cooked them. He ate one himself, and kept the other for his brother. Then he went back to sleep. But while he slept, a venomous snake which lived in the tree came down and bit him, so that he died in his sleep. In the morning the older brother awoke and found a meal prepared for him, so he ate the bird, and then tried to wake his brother, but soon discovered that the boy was dead. This grieved him very much, and he wept bitterly. He wanted to give his brother a proper Hindu cremation, 
so he made up his mind to leave him there until he could do so. He placed the younger brother in the branches of the tree and went his way. That same day, Mahadeo and Parbati were passing that way, and Parbati, who was always described as a strong-willed goddess, always going her own way, asked Mahadeo to see what was in the tree. They found the body of the dead boy, and Parbati insisted that he should be made alive again. So Mahadeo sprinkled a few drops of blood upon him, and he sat up, alive and well. Close to this place, a raja had just died, and his people placed his crown on the trunk of an elephant, leaving it to him to place it upon the head of any man there, and that man would be their future king. The elephant looked upon them all, and then, walking up to Rupa, placed the crown upon his head. At first the people objected, because he was a stranger and did not belong to their town. But after a while, they accepted him as their king, and thus the words of the bird were fulfilled. In the meantime, Besunta came to the same city and begged for a night's shelter. The people were fully aware that night after night, a fierce, man-eating tiger came to that town and demanded a man to eat. They did not wish to give one of the men belonging to the town, so Besunta, being a stranger, was selected for the tiger and told to go sleep in the place where it was likely to come. At night he lay awake, thinking, and the tiger came. But Besuntha had his sword beside him, and so he promptly killed the tiger and placed its ears and whiskers in his pocket. In the morning a sweeper came, thinking to find the stranger dead and his bones scattered about. But, instead, he found the tiger dead and the stranger lying fast asleep. So he resolved to take all the honor of killing the tiger to himself and went back to the city with the news that he had killed the tiger single-handedly and saved the man. This story was believed and the sweeper was richly rewarded, but Basuntha heard nothing. Now there lived in that city a merchant who owned a ship and went to distant cities to trade. But sometimes the ship got stuck in the sandbanks and could not be moved. At such times it was necessary to kill a man, and then the sand was pleased at the sacrifice and let the ship go. It was always difficult to find a man for this purpose, and the Raja was often asked to select one. Besuntha at this time had taken up service in the house of an oil merchant, and being a stranger he was selected for a second time and sent by the Raja to accompany the merchant at the risk of his own life. At the first sandbank, when the ship was in difficulties and could not be moved, the merchant told Besuntha that he must be prepared to die. But Besuntha said, you desire your ship to move, whether I die or whether I do not. If I can make it move on for you, will you spare my life? To this the merchant agreed, and Basuntha cut his finger and dropped a few drops of blood into the sea. As soon as he did this, the ship moved on, and so the merchant would not part with him or kill him, but kept him during the whole voyage and brought him back to the town. Rupa had half forgotten his brother all this while, but one day he was stricken with remorse and determined to find out what had happened after he had left the forest with the intention of burning the remains of Besuntha. In order to get news of him, he sent out a notice that he would pay anyone who would come daily and talk with him, for he hoped in the course of conversation that someone would mention the circumstances of the boy who was found dead in a tree in the forest. At length Besuntha himself came to hear what the Raja, his brother, was doing. So he disguised himself as a girl and went to the palace. When the Raja saw him, he said, What do you have to say, O oh my daughter? And Basuntha said, Do you wish me to talk about general subjects or only about myself? Of yourself, said Rupa. So the lad began. There were once two brothers whose names were Rupa and Basuntha, and they had a stepmother. Rupa's interest was now breathless. But after telling a small part of the story, Basuntha said he was tired and would tell the rest the next day. The next day he continued and told how a snake had bitten Basuntha and how he had died in the forest and had been raised to life by Mahadeo and Parbati. Rupa was now full of anxiety to know the rest, but Basuntha said he had forgotten it, so nothing could be done. When he came again, he said that he remembered that Basuntha came to a certain town where the Raja ordered him to be given to a tiger how he had escaped the tiger and all the other dangers, and had in his pocket the proof. Thus saying, he took out the tiger's ears and whiskers, and, as his eyes met his brothers, they recognized each other and fell upon each other's necks. 
the end. I love how the rabbit just kept being pushy and taking stuff until he took too much. And the story of the two brothers was very sweet. I know stepmothers get a bad rep, but I gotta say, the father was absolutely useless as well. I hope all the folks stepping in and stepping up and helping out parent kids that they didn't help make get the respect and love that they deserve. And the podcast shout out is to a favorite of mine, The History of Georgia Sacarvelo, hosted by my buddy Roberto, Gamarjoba Roberto. If you're curious about this tiny but important country, snuggled deep in the Caucasus Mountains, let Roberto take you back to the land of Kartveli and Kachapuri. And if you speak Georgian, check out my friend Gio's podcast on fighting championships. And so if you like their podcast as much as I do, go and give them a listen, a rating, and review. And the listener shout-out goes to the city of Chennai, formerly Madras, in Tamil Nadu in India. An ancient city, it is located on the southwest coast of India, just a little above Sri Lanka. Europeans started showing up in the 1500s, first the Portuguese, naming things after St. Thomas, and then the British and that darn East India Company. When they retook their city in the Indian independence of 1947, they became the capital of the Madras state, later the Tamil Nadu state. And so to my listeners in Chennai, I say, Natri Madrum Kunait. Thank you, and good night.